Good morning. Today we learn about the first phase of international movement. The previous lesson we have already seen that the revolt of 1857 paved the way for growth of nationalism in India. But the national movement started in India with the formation of Indian National Congress in 1885. And the national movement can be divided into three phases. The early nationalist phase, the assertive phase, and the Gandhian era. So in this lesson, we learn about the activities of the early nationalists, some of the achievements of the early nationalists, and contributions of uh, three of the main early nationalist leaders. So let's uh, begin the lesson. First we discuss the names of some of the prominent early nationalist leaders. Some of the prominent leaders are W.C. Banerjee, Dadabai Navroji, R.C. Dutt, Surendra Nath Banerjee, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Firoz Shah Mehta, Justice Ranade, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, Tia Naidu, Subramanyam Ayer, Anand Charlu, and some Europeans like A.O. Hume, Vedderban, etc. are some of the prominent early nationalist leaders. These early nationalist leaders are also known as moderates. They were staunch believers in open-minded moderate politics. That is why they were known as moderates. And they were very liberal in their attitude also. They maintained good relationship with the British. And they believed that the British would grant home rule to the Indians. They had a complete faith in the justice and fair play of the British. They believed that the British would solve the problems of the Indians if the Indians are putting the matters of Indians before the British government as well as the British public. And they further believed the British would abolish social evils from the Indian society like untouchability, child marriage, polygamy and the other superstitions from Indian society. So they had a total faith in the British sense of justice and fair play. These moderate leaders put some demands before the British government and the demands of the moderates can be categorized as constitutional reforms, economic reforms, defense of civil rights and administrative uh, reforms. So let's see what are these uh, demands. First we see the constitutional demands put forward by the moderates. The moderates made some demands for constitutional reforms in India. And some of these constitutional reforms are abolition of India Council, expansion of legislative assemblies 
and legislative councils, adequate representation of Indians in the Executive Council of Viceroy and those of the governors. And some economic reforms demanded by the moderates are reduction in the land revenue, <coughs> protection of peasants from the zamindas and uh, money lenders, reduction in expenditure of army, availability of cheap credit to peasants through agricultural banks, development of banking system, abolition of salt tax and duty on sugar. The moderates made some demands to protect the civil rights of the Indians. They are removal of restrictions imposed on freedom of speech and press, abolition of preventive detention act, restoration of right to assemble and to form associations. The administrative demands of the moderates were Indianization of services through simultaneous ICS examinations in England and India, complete separation of executive and the judiciary, increase in the power of local bodies, wider employment of Indians in higher grades of administration, spread of primary education and improvement of police system. These are some of the administrative reforms demanded by the moderates. The main goal of the moderates was attainment of self-government within the British Empire. They did not demand for complete freedom. They demanded just self-government that is under the British rule. And in order to attain their goal, they adopted constitutional agitation methods. So remember, the aim of the moderates was attainment of self-government under the British rule and the method adopted by the moderates was constitutional agitation method, that is peaceful method. And the constitutional agitation method had two sets of methods. First set of method and the second set of method. First set of method. The first set of method has some objectives or in other words in order to fulfill the fulfill some objectives the moderates adopted first set of methods and the method and the objective was to educate the indians in modern politics to create a national political consciousness among the Indians and to create a united body of public opinion or a united public opinion. These were the main objectives and in order to gain these objectives they adopted first set of, method, first set of methods and the programs for the first set of methods included organizing meetings where they held where they uh, delivered speeches and passed resolutions on matters of public interest 
they made use of the press in order to popularize the ideologies of the moderates as well as to criticize the wrong policies of the British government and they send memorandums and petitions to the British officials. So these were some of the programs adopted by the moderates in the first set of methods in order to attain their objectives like educating the Indians in modern politics to create public opinion and to create national political consciousness among the Indians. And the second set of methods was meant for influencing the British government and the British public. And in order to influence the British government and the British public, they adopted the three P's. Three P's means prayers, petitions, and protest. The word prayer, protest, and the word petition, all these three words are starting with the letter P. So since all these three words are starting with the letter P, they termed the, the method as three P's. But the some of the Congress as well as some of the Indian people, Congress members as well as the Indian people, criticized the methods adopted by the moderates. They were not happy with the methods of the moderates. And the main criticisms leveled against the moderates are methods used by the early nationalists were inadequate. That means the early nationalists did not believe in their strength and their ability. They just uh, believed in the generosity of the British. They waited for the generosity and mercy of the British. When they made some demands, if the British were kind enough, they accepted the demands and granted the demands. But uh, whenever or wherever the uh, demands that clashed with the interest of the British, they never uh, accepted such demands. That's why it is said that the methods used by the early nations were inadequate because they just uh, depended on the generosity and the mercy of the British. They failed to realize that the British and Indian interests clashed with each other because they believed in the British sense of justice and fair play. Another criticism against the moderates was they failed to draw the masses into the mainstream of national movement. The moderates belonged to the educated middle class section of the Indian society. They did not spread their ideas among the common people and that is why they did not get the, they were unable to get the support of the common people. So this is considered as one of the biggest drawback of the moderates. They failed to draw the masses into the mainstream of the national movement. They could not bring the common people into the national movement. Now we will see some of the achievements of the early nationalists. Some of the achievements of early nationalists. First, the early nationalists created national awakening among the people. They trained people in politics. They did pioneering work by exposing the true nature of British rule in India. 
and because of their efforts the british introduced some uh, reforms in india these are also considered as the achievements of the early nationalists they are appointment of public service commission in 1886 a resolution for simultaneous examination for ics in england and india was passed by the british house of commons in 1893 appointment of well be commission on indian expenditure in 1895 and the indian councils act passed in 1892 these are some of the reforms introduced by the british in india because of the efforts of the moderates now we learn about dada bhai nauru ji and his contributions Dada Bhai Nauruji was born on 4th September 1824 in a Parsi family in Mumbai. He was a social religious reformer as well as a nationalist leader. He was popularly known as Grand Old Man of India. He started his career as a professor of mathematics in the elphinstone college in mumbai after 10 years of his service he left for england as a partner in fm during his stay in england he worked for the cause of indians some of the contributions of dada bhai nauruji Ahar. Dada Bhai Nauruji laid foundation to Bombay Association, London India Society, East India Association, etc. He was the first Indian to become the member of British House of Commons. the british house of commons is a similar house to that of lok sabha in india the lower house of the british parliament is known as house of commons and during his stay in england he introduced the problems of the indians in the british parliament and as a result of as a result of his efforts the british house of commons passed a resolution in 1893 to conduct ics examinations in england and in india simultaneously for his services in england he is popularly known as unofficial ambassador of india dada bhai nauruji edited a newspaper named rashtra gupta he started a magazine dharma marg darshak his famous book is known as poverty and un british rule in india the drain theory is a part of this book through which he explains how the british exploited indian resources and transferred it to england as an active leader of the indian national congress as well as indian national movement he was elected as the president of international congress three times in 1886 1893 and in 1906 as the president of international congress he passed the four resolutions 
on self government swadeshi boycott and national education the credit for demanding swaraj for the first time on the congress platform in 1906 goes to dada bhai nawroji dada bhai nawroji passed away on 30 june 1917 gopal krishna gokhale gopal krishna gokhale was a social reformer and an eminent early nationalist leader he was born at korapur in maharashtra in 1866 he was a professor of history and economics at the ferguson college pune he was closely associated with the dakkan education society he was awarded the title cie that is companion of indian empire he was elected as the president of indian national congress in 1905 some of the contributions of gopal krishna gokhale gopal krishna gokhale founded the servants of india society in 1905 in order to train and help the nationalist leaders he visited south africa and joined mahatma gandhi in his campaign against racial discrimination in south africa he persuaded mahatma gandhi to come back to india and to join the indian national movement mahatma gandhi calls gokhale his political mentor and guide gokhale was greatly instrumental in passing the morley window reforms of 1909 gokhale opposed and criticized the british government on issues like incurring huge expenditure on english army adopting the policy of racial discrimination in appointment to high posts imposing production tax on cotton he appealed to the british government for separation of judiciary from executive not to enforce partition of bengal to appoint more indians in higher services gopal krishna gokhale as a member of imperial legislative council gopal krishna gokhale was elected as a member of the imperial legislative council in 1902 he appealed in the council for reduction of salt duty and abolition of excise duty on cotton goods his efforts led to the reduction in toll tax he impressed upon the government to reduce the land revenue he demanded to make primary education compulsory he demanded radical changes in the fiscal policy that's all about gopal krishna gokhale surendra nath banerji 1848 to 1925 he is popularly known as father of indian nationalism he was a journalist an educationist and a prominent early nationalist leader he was born in bengal in 1848 he started his career as a professor of english at the metropolitan college calcutta he set up a school which later developed into the famous arippan college surendranath banerjee was an elected member of calcutta corporation for almost 20 years he was elected to the bengal legislative council 
four times. He was the first Indian to be appointed as a Minister of Self-Government and Health by the Governor of Bengal. He was the first Indian to qualify the Indian Civil Service examination. Some of the contributions of Surendranath Banerjee. He established Indian Association and convened two sessions of Indian National Conference. He was elected as the President of Indian National Congress in 1895 and 1902. He edited a newspaper, Bengali. His famous book was Nation in the Making. He started agitation against the License Act, Arms Act, Vernacular Press Act, and against lowering the age limit for Indian Civil Service exam from 21 years to 19 years. He opposed the more remedial reforms for the separate electorate to Muslims. He opposed the partition of Bengal in 1905. Surendranath Banerjee breathed his last in 1925. His famous saying was, Opposition where necessary, cooperation where possible. That's all about Surendranath Banerjee and the other early nationalist leaders and the first phase of the Indian national movement. You read the lesson well, understand it, find out the questions and learn the lesson well. Thank you.